He's not a, a war hero. He's a war hero. He's a war Five hero. Five and a half years. He's a war hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured, okay? I hate to tell you. <laughs> Do you He's agree with that? He's a war hero because he was captured, okay? All these years later, it's not clear who's sicker, the guy who says it or the people who laugh. Hi again, everyone. It's 5 o'clock in New York. For his part, Trump showed us who he was back then. It was back in 2015. Loud and clear and proud, right? He was proud to be saying those things. And if you were one of those who thought that maybe, just maybe, serving as commander in chief would change him, would fundamentally change how he saw those who, as he said there, served our nation and were captured, that it might make him appreciate those who devoted their lives or their time or their energy to protecting the rest of us, a country who risked their lives to defend America and Americans, you would be wrong about that. It did nothing to change him. As we learned from the jaw-dropping revelations in a piece in The Atlantic in 2020 by Jeffrey Goldberg, Donald Trump's view as president of those who served their country was almost unimaginably cruel. He called those Americans who sacrificed their lives for the country, quote, losers and quote, suckers. He did not ever want to see amputees. He didn't want them included in military parades because, quote, Donald Trump said, nobody wants to see that, end quote. And now for the very first time, those stories are being confirmed by a man who was there when they happened, in the room when it happened. It's Donald Trump's former White House chief of staff, the retired U.S. Marine Corps General John Kelly. In a searing takedown of his ex-boss, the president, John Kelly tells CNN this, quote, what can I add that has not already been said? A person who thinks that those who defend their country in uniform or are shot down or seriously wounded in combat or spend years being tortured as POWs are suckers because there is nothing in it for them? A person that did not want to be seen in the presence of military amputees because, quote, it doesn't look good for me? A person who demonstrated open contempt for a Gold Star family for all Gold Star families on TV during the 2016 campaign and rants that our most precious heroes who gave their lives in America's defense are losers and wouldn't visit their graves in France. It was John Kelly for the first time putting that indictment of Donald Trump's character and lack of fitness on the record. Now, for his part, Donald Trump was asked to comment about Kelly, and he said this. Kelly, quote, totally clowned himself with these debunk stories he's made up, end quote. So John Kelly was Trump's longest serving White House chief of staff, and he had a very personal exchange with the ex-president at Arlington National Cemetery that was chronicled in that Atlantic piece. This is from that piece, quote, the two men were set to visit Section 60, the 14 acre area of the cemetery that is the burial ground for those killed in America's most recent wars. Kelly's son Robert is buried in Section 60, a first lieutenant in the Marine Corps, Robert Kelly was killed in 2010 in Afghanistan. He was 29 years old. Trump was meant on this visit to join his chief of staff, John Kelly, in paying respects at his son's grave and to comfort the families of other fallen service members. But according to sources with knowledge of this visit, Trump, while standing at Robert Kelly's grave, turned directly to his father, John Kelly, and said, quote, I don't get it. What was in it for them? Kelly's confirmation of Trump's heinous, ugly, and disrespectful past comments come as the ex-president just recently accused the country's top general, top military official of treason, a crime he said is punishable by death. This is where we start the hour with some of our favorite reporters and friends. Retired four-star general and MSNBC military analyst Barry McCaffrey's here. Also joining us, New York Times Washington correspondent Mike Schmidt, who writes about John Kelly extensively in his book, Donald Trump versus the United States. Joining me at the table, the founder of the Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America and host of the Independent Americans podcast, Paul Rykoff is here. I mean, General McCaffrey, it, I, the stories 
have been told before. And the pain that drips off the quotes was apparent when I read them the first time. But to have John Kelly, someone who seemed to have a tortured relationship between the intersection of duty and covering up the heinous nature of Donald Trump's character, to see him come sort of full circle on that and, and reveal himself as a firsthand witness to Donald Trump's disdain for wounded veterans and those who died serving our country is, is, is perhaps the most shocking thing about the Trump story. Yeah, we, we got to remember, look, uh, John Kelly, a career Marine, an enlisted Marine, made sergeant, son, as you reported, killed in action, another son in the Marine Corps right now, uh, one of the finest uh, Marines I've ever met. He took that job in Trump's White House only at the urging of Secretary Mattis, who said, we got to get somebody over there and try and get the White House under control. He tried to stay loyal to Trump. Trump is a cruel, heartless, ignorant, unpatriotic uh, person. And I think uh, when Kelly finally fired, quit, uh, he has tried to stay off the net out of sheer loyalty, loyalty to the institution. Uh, but this is shocking uh, and should be taken into account by the American people. Um, Mike Schmidt, you've written extensively about John Kelly. Um, I, I just want your thoughts about um, him confirming to CNN and, and attributing these stories um, to things that he saw and heard with his own eyes and ears. I think that one of the great struggles of John Kelly had been how does he deal with what he saw and what he sees is his duty as a former general to stay out of politics. And he, as General McCaffrey was pointing out, is not someone you have seen or heard a lot from. He's someone that sort of went away. He didn't write a book. He didn't give, you know, big network interviews. He's someone that has sort of gone on with his life and, you know, basically been teaching leadership classes across the country and, and, you know, moving into retirement. So for Kelly to do this, it's something that, that, is, that is extraordinary for himself because he has long thought that he is a former Marine general, which he is, and that those people should not be thrown into the partisan winds of the moment. They shouldn't be used in politics. They shouldn't be weighing in on who's a better candidate for office, that they are really true to their oath. Now, that that um, discipline to the oath has led to a lot of criticism of Kelly, because people say, well, why did it take you so long to say something? Why didn't you speak up? Why, why now? And I think that Kelly, like a lot of former Trump officials, sees uh, what they think is a massive threat of Trump coming back. And in the face of that, given all the things that have been said about Trump, my guess is that John Kelly said that it was worth it to sort of cross that, that line into weighing in publicly about something that, that he probably knew would be gobbled up by the political winds of the moment. Um, Paul Rick, I'm not sure if you can be elected president as a convicted felon. I don't know the answer. I am positive that you cannot be elected president of the United States if everyone who decides to vote knows of your disdain for those who serve the country. I think that's right. And I think that's very important because Trump's behavior is disgusting. It's dishonorable. This is who he is. We know he has no integrity. We know he has no honor. The question now, like in many situations in America, is what do we do? What's the strategy? we got to move past the emotion and figure out how do we stop this guy as a national security threat. And I think that's why this moment is so important, because Kelly, Milley, there are others like Mattis, McMasters. They can't just release a statement to the news and go away and watch it on TV. They have to get in the arena. They have to tell us everything they know to include if it has anything to do with the confidential documents and other indictments that are in play. And then they have to stop him politically. They have to get in front of the cameras. They have to go on the campaign trail if necessary. And they have to stand in defense of the flag, stand in defense of our military. And I've said this before, I think, to you and others, they can uniquely influence people who are on the fence. 
They can move independents. They can move people in swing states. And if the Democrats don't figure out how to weaponize this, they should do it themselves. So I'm going to continue talking directly to them. Generals, we need you. You can't just sit in the background. We need you in the arena. We need you pushing you back, pushing back. They can uniquely score points. And now is the time for them to do it. Well...